This is Cybert signing into Kane's Wrath on the map. Troops of Triumph for a 1v1 in 1.03. Another 1.03 game in the north as the blue Steel Talons. This is Drive. And in the south as the purple Reaper 17, it's Field of Green, a.k.a. Jake White? or Whitey. I think Whitey is what he normally goes by, but uh, not sure what I'm going to be calling him in this game. Uh, I don't know that I've ever casted him before, so uh, we'll just see. Not familiar with this map either, and it's 1.03, so there's all sorts of changes. But once again, we get to see some Steel Talons action. We got some Descents coming out from Whitey on the left side of the map there. Going to be heading up north. And of course, Steel Talons. Ooh, ooh, fast into three Engineers. I almost called them Grenadiers. But uh, into three Engineers, which I don't know what he's going to be going for. He could be going for his opponent's Tib Spike and then two other things. But I'm not 100% sure. We'll keep an eye on that. Descent's heading through the middle of the map. Going to be cutting around up to the north. It looks like it's going to be Hammerheads as the follow-up. Of course, it, well, he did sell off the command post pretty much immediately, and this should be tipping off to Whitey. He should be like, hey, uh, you should have something more than just a single refinery. And, of course, seeing the hammerhead will be a good indication of that. Is he trying to kill some Tiberium, like green Tiberium? I don't know. Okay. You can, you can certainly do that, but uh, I don't know how much it's really going to be doing. So, huh. All right, guys, I have to admit something to you. The name of this replay is like L and then a whole bunch of O's and then an L. So I'm guessing something weird happens in this game. So Drive grabbing his opponent's Tib Spike, his own Tib Spike, and this Mutant Hovel. And now I'm just so curious. Is he going? No, he's not building more Hammerheads. Okay, he's going into Harvesters. Where did his MCV go? He packed it up and he moved it somewhere. Okay, he's heading for his natural expansion. Whitey is doing the exact same thing, getting his refinery dropping down pretty soon. It should be. Oh, no, he drops his second refinery over here. So he was down on economy a little bit here, a little bit slow on the on the second refinery. But, you know, when it's pretty short to move to your natural expansion, hey, why the heck not? Move your MCV first, get your expansion later. I'm so curious about this mutant hovel. Like, what is his plan here? Hammerhead flying around, doing a little bit of harassment, as you guys can see. A couple of shard walkers walking around the place. Cover one seeker tank. I was going to say a couple seeker tanks, but just the one, at least for now. And all right, what are you, what are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? It's a rifleman inside of there, so it's not even. I keep expecting that because he's kept this ro this airfield around, that he is going to draft a whole bunch of hammerheads that he's going to load them up with mutants, and then we are going to have a good old-fashioned mutant hammerhead party. Instead, it's just going to be this one rifleman inside of this hammerhead, which might actually just get caught by these shardwalkers. No, it does manage to escape. Not even narrowly there. It doesn't take any damage at all. A little bit of an orca strike coming in across the map. Expansion still not quite up for drive. It is up for whitey, though. And uh, rocket squads. Oh, okay. All right, here we go, boys. You guys ready? You guys ready? We got MRTs, we got rocket squads, and everything, I assume, is set to aggressive aggressive stance, which means we are going to have some flying MRTs in just a moment. This is six, now seven MRTs out on the field. They are soon to be flying around. They are soon to not be loaded up with mutants, but they are soon to be flying around and hanging out, so we are up for some Steel tal Talons shenanigans. Not many places do you get to see some classic, classic MRTs loaded up with uh, mostly rocket squads. I don't think I can actually select the MRTs to see uh, what they can do. Uh, AP ammo on the way? Nope, not yet. Could be for Tier 3, that command post. On Whitey's side of things, we do have Gravity Stabilizer. Looks like he's strapped for cash. Could be getting force fields as well. Is this force field generators? No, this is attenuated force fields. The tier three one is, uh, I guess, force field generators. 
One Stormrider going down, and of course, uh, oh, also Stormriders. I don't know if this is just Reaper Stormriders, but Stormriders are Shard Stormriders now. And I do believe they get the Blue Shard upgrade. Yes, they do, which means they do even more damage. I think Stormriders are a little more tanky in general now in 1.03. And that just gives them a little bit extra viability. So we do have two gravity stabilizers and uh, three or four. Yeah, four Storm Riders currently out on the map. Force fields have been purchased. So these MRTs are going to have to contend with shard, shard walkers, shard Storm Riders, and force field. So now it's going to be three gravity stabilizers. This is a lot of Storm Riders. And these Storm Riders have insane DPS. Once they get close, EMP fires off. Does it catch anything? I thought I heard EMP fire off. I don't actually know if... Uh, yeah, he did grab the EMP. Oh, he was damaging the drone ship, which gets caught. And oh, so many MRTs exploding. Two do escape. Oh, drive, you poor schmuck. Another MRT annihilated as they do not have the strength to stand up against six Storm Riders, which were currently attacking a building and then turn their attention on the MRT and destroy it. Drive beacons. Okay. I guess he wants to call attention to the fact that he is now producing mutant marauders. So he has sort of perhaps caught his opponent unaware. So as you can see, these Storm Riders taking so much punishment from these slingshots. Slingshots barely doing anything versus these Storm Riders. And this number of Storm Riders will soon be diminished as they get very low on health. Two more Storm Riders get eliminated. And this third one does not escape as it goes down over the mountain pass there. A couple of mammoth tanks out on the field. Looks like the MCV is mostly gone. Is this his only building? Oh my gosh, this is his only building. Drive has lost everything except... Yep, this is the only thing he hasn't lost, so he's only got the units out on the field. This is going to be a nuts match. Oh, he got a zone trooper inside of one of those heavy harvesters. One harvester going to be taking a bit of damage for Whitey, a.k.a. Field of Green. And, uh, well, these Mutant Marauders are going to be able to somewhat deal with the Storm Riders. They actually do pretty good DPS versus the Storm Riders. So one Storm Rider gets killed, and uh, or two or three, well, no, there's a whole bunch more which should be able to deal with these Mutant Marauders, but we'll have to see once the Slingshots gets in, get in here. This could actually be too much force for these Storm Riders to deal with by themselves. One Harvester down, two more definitely under threat of being eliminated. The Storm Riders continuing to trade blows with those Mutant Marauders, but that's a full heroic slingshot as well and this is apparently an active meteor still falling through the atmosphere in the corner of the map there as these storm riders are actually getting picked apart by the mutant marauders drive making my dreams come true as this zone raider inside of the harvester is killing harvesters and refineries of his opponents shard walkers now able to deal with the mutant marauders one to one but they can't deal with the mammoth tank which comes in from behind to blast them as they're trying to deal with the the harvesters and are unable to shut down this attack from drive whitey with every advantage is somehow losing forces to mutant marauders camping his war factory EMP locks down both the Shard Walkers, the MCV, and the War Factory as more Storm Riders try and respond to the ever-growing bizarre threat that our Drive's forces as he camps outside of his opponent's War Factory with Harvesters, Mutant Marauders, and even a Rifleman Squad or two. What an attack by Drive. What an absolute menace that he is. And somehow pulling over here, these Storm Riders unable to contest. And this War Factory is going down as this Zone Raider inside, or the Zone Troopers, he's not Zocom, the Zone Troopers inside of the Heavy Harvester actually do an incredible amount of damage because their coat of armor is a Heavy Harvester. And the forces of Whitey being pushed back, unable to stop the onslaught, to stop the slaughter, which is Drive's attack. Oh my gosh, Drive. What is this? He's actually taking this game. 
<laughs> he killed the drone ship. He's got a foundry, but he doesn't have any money. Oh, field of green. Field of green, <laughs> he's out of cash as well. So he can't even build anything. Oh, the EMP. I don't know how long until the EMP reloads, but uh, this entire battle could be won or lost by the EMP. If he manages to EMP all of the Shardwalkers, I think he can take this. He needs to get as many forces as he possibly can over here. And I mean, if, if Whitey realized that that building was it, he maybe could have suicided everything earlier and just killed the building and he wouldn't have to fight the actual forces. Harvester's now going to be rushing forward, and the Harvesters of Drive are getting low on health, but this one single slingshot pushing back the Stormriders, stopping them from being a part of this fight. Harvesters being targeted down, and then slingshot pushing the Stormriders now further forward into the forces of the Mutant Marauders, as Whitey has nothing left to fight against Drive and Steel Talons. Without a Titan, without a Wolverine, without really any of the forces that make them Steel Talons, except the lowly, the humble, the incredible Heavy Harvester. Drive <laughs> crushes the army of Field of Green. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a game. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I think we're going to take a look at another match after this. So it's going to be a bizarre one. Master Leaf and I were chit-chatting about it. And <laughs> so we got another game coming up. I hope you guys enjoyed this. But let's jump into another fantastic 1.03 game. Which takes us to Tournament LA. With a blue field in the center, but in the north as the red Mark Dovecane, this is Masterleaf. And in the south as the yellow Scrin, this is Space. I think this is from the, uh, the same batch of games that... Ooh, we got a secret shrine. Uh-huh, yeah. Cybernetic Legs on the way. 1,000 credits, 45 seconds. I think this is from the same batch of games as that Tournament Crater game, which if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Space versus Master Leaf on that map leads to, to some pretty good matches. Now, this is 1.03, so there have been some updates, and there have been some changes. So take note to what we've got as far as building blocks. We've got five Awakened Squads, a sixth one up there, and an Engineer. These are all going to be important tools. We've got cybernetic legs on the way, and we've got some descents heading out to the right side of the map from space. Other than that, things looking pretty normal. He's got himself an infused seeker tank, got a buzzer as a part of that, and a tib spike over there. That's the setting for this match. Engineer cuts off to the left, and the Awakened Squad's going to be rushing forward, of course, with the legs. They are a bit faster, and I think in 1.03, they're even faster than they were previously. First Gunwalker is out. EMP locks down the Gunwalker, locks down the Refinery, locks down the War Factory as well. Engineer cutting in to a locked down EMP'd MCV. And there's the capture. Master Leaf grabs the MCV, sells it off immediately, gets himself another Engineer. This one a little bit more slow. And Space has been defeated. This was a bit of a show match for Master Leaf. And by that, I mean a showcase of a match where he uh, he was thinking about this and he was like, hey, if I get fast legs, since they're better now, and I get, you know, five or six awakened squads, Scrin just can't do anything about it if you play it right. Like, you can EMP any unit that they build. If they drop a buzzer hive, you can EMP that. You can EMP the power plants. And as long as their MCV doesn't get into the air, you can capture it with the engineer because it's EMP'd and they can't escape. So, that is that game. Definitely a weird one. Definitely a fun one for Master Leaf vs. Space. And a little bit of a, uh, a silly game. Not a serious match at all. But that is a strategy that Master Leaf has been, I guess, perfecting in uh, 1.03. So you can look forward to more shenanigans like this in the future. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And this is Cybert signing out.